Hey everybody, this is Frankie Slauson, and welcome to another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show. And today on my Icons of Pop Culture series, I have with me a very big iconic uh, uh, icon of pop culture, and he wor uh, works for Disney, uh, currently Walt Disney Entertainment, and his name is Floyd Norman, and he is what they call a Disney legend, and welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah, happy to, uh, after trying to uh, fix some errors and whatnot, I think we got everything working out. Try to get all the okay. kinks working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes it can be tough. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's the internet for you. But uh, yeah. how 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 you been? I've been fine. I've been uh, very good, very good and very busy. Um, a lot of uh, traveling this year. I've uh, been doing a book tour. My new book, Animated Life, uh, was published this year, so that's kept me busy, along with speaking engagements and uh, still working on comic books and on a TV show. So uh, for a retiree, I've had a very busy year. Oh, wow. But, uh, yeah, wow. happy to be busy, though. Oh, that's cool. That, that, that's cool. I suppose, especially nowadays and, and, and the way things are nowadays, I suppose, uh, Working even though you're retired is probably what most people probably would rather do anyway. Well, in my case, I do it because actually I prefer to do it. I, I suppose some people are working at retirement because they need the money. <laughs> the prime motivator. Yeah. But in my case, I work because I just love what I do. Oh, that's cool, and that's that's the biggest that's yeah. the biggest thrill of it all. I would say to love what you do. Oh yeah, that, that's what life is all about. And uh, so, how was it for you, like uh, in your early days when you first got started? How old was I? I, uh, well, I mean, like well, uh, I started out. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was just a little kid. Okay. Okay. What I mean is like like uh, like what I asked you uh, when we t uh, did take one, uh, like how like what was your early beginnings like like when you were a child and then eventually uh, getting to Disney. Oh, you mean the uh, things that influenced me as a child? Yeah, to to eventually yeah. to eventually get you to Disney. Oh yeah, well, like most kids, I was influenced by a lot of the media. Of course, the media back when I was a kid was quite simple. It was newspapers, magazines, and movies. We didn't really have television when I was a little kid. Television came a bit later, so I grew up watching motion pictures watching cartoons and reading comic books so those were the major influences when i was a kid but i fell in love with that stuff and i knew that i wanted to one day work in animation and i wanted to one day hopefully work for disney now are, uh, are you one of, one of the first african-americans to actually work for disney or or was that something else that kind of got you, you know they yeah, I've heard that. They they tell me I was, although I don't think I was actually the first to work for Disney. Uh, although I did get there, you know, fairly early in the game, uh, in the 1950s. But, uh, yeah, I wasn't exactly the first African-American to work at the studio. But let's say I was among the first to work there. Okay, okay. Well, and that's kind of a cool title to have too. I mean, just uh, you know, because uh, you know, back in the, those days, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, well, obviously, compared to nowadays, you know, with uh, the way animation is today, compared to what it was like, you know, when you first started, I'm sure that's completely yeah. blows your mind. Well, the business has been around for a while. So uh, when I came to Disney, I came there simply because I had fallen in love with animation, with the medium and that's what excited me. Uh, you know, I didn't go there to prove anything, and I had no agenda, only to become the best animation artist I could be. So I was drawn to the business simply because I loved animation and I loved filmmaking, and that's why I came to Disney. And what were some of the uh, films that you actually got to work on? Well, one of the first projects I, I worked on at the Walt Disney Studios was the Mickey Mouse Club. Huh. The Mickey Mouse Club had just hit the air uh, as well as the the, the uh, weekly television program Disneyland had just started on ABC. So those were two of the projects I worked on when I first came to Disney. 
the Mickey Mouse Club, and Disneyland. Eventually, I worked on short cartoons, and then over time, I began to work on the feature films. And, and a lot of the stuff that Disney uh, has come out with, pretty much just about everything, is uh, very recognizable because, uh, you know, Disney doesn't really allow, you know, like foul language in their in their uh, shows. They want it to be family-oriented. And I think that's, that's pretty cool that... Uh, that Disney has uh, been doing that for so long, and still, uh, even with the, their latest release, which was what Monsters University, I believe, Disney and Pixar's. Yeah, was, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, even just to still keep it clean uh, after all yeah, these years. It's a family, yeah, it's a family company. <laughs> a very, a very family friendly company. So yeah, uh, and that's what Walt wanted. He he wanted he wanted his company to provide. Uh, entertainment for the whole family. Uh, we weren't chasing any particular demographic. We wanted everybody to be able to go to a Disney film and to enjoy it, and that it would be appropriate for all ages. And what are some of your favorite uh, Disney films that you've actually, uh, uh, whether you worked on them or, or you haven't, uh, what, what are some of your favorite Disney films that, uh, uh, that, uh, that you enjoy? Well, like most people, I think my favorite Disney films are the classics the films that uh, I saw as a kid, uh, long before I ever came to work at Disney. Uh, Pinocchio is a uh, right. just a, a masterpiece, uh, a classic Disney film. I love Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Uh, certainly films like Bambi and Dumbo. Uh, they, these were the films I saw as a little kid, and they were the films that influenced me and, and caused me to want to uh, prepare myself the work in this wonderful medium. It wasn't until years later that I arrived at the studio to work on Sleeping Beauty right. and uh, 101 Dalmatians, The Jungle Book. So I had the opportunity to work with a lot of the same people who made the classics I saw as a kid, and that was something very, very special for a young artist like myself. And, and back in, in the day, or early days when you first, like when you first worked on like one of your first major films. How or how how long did it actually take from the the time that you first started with the idea till it came out in theaters? Did you say how different were the films that came out then? I, I mean, as opposed to the ones now. What I mean is, uh, how how long did it actually take you when you first started uh, to uh, like say you did one hundred and one Dalmatians? How long did it actually take from the start from the time that the idea came out till it actually came out on film? Oh, I see. Well, that's that's kind of a tricky question because sometimes these films can be in development for as long as 10 years. Uh, you never really know because uh, sometimes a film is being developed and then it goes back on the shelf. And then it's pulled off the shelf and worked on again. So it's difficult to say. A film can be uh, in production from three years to 10 years uh, Ideally, they shouldn't take any longer than two or three years to make. I, I would say the average animated feature film, uh, the artists spend at least two to three years working on that motion picture. So uh, unlike live action films, because animation, at least animation the way it used to be, was pretty much a handmade product, a handcrafted product. And so that meant it took time and three years to make a feature motion picture was not unusual. It would take that long or even longer to to develop a film, put it to production, and then get the final final completed film. You find out that a lot of years have gone by in the making of that particular film. Wow, that's pre- that's pretty in- interesting, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're right. I mean, when it comes to animation, I mean, it, it takes a long time to, and I, and I think even to this day, I think it takes a little while to for stuff because I think uh, they said it. What? How long did it take? Like almost four or five years for Monsters University to come out? I believe. Well, actually, the one thing that we have going for us today is that the production process uh, has accelerated. So it doesn't take as long to make the film as it used to because these films today are CGI. You know, they're computer generated. Yeah. So they're not drawn by hand. So it's true, they can spend a couple of years working on story. But once the film moves into production today, they can have that film move through production in less than a year. Uh, I've seen that happen. So 
the uh, computer process has uh, certainly speeded things up a great deal. But in the old days, when every drawing had to be made by hand, it just took a great deal longer. <laughs> and and, uh, and uh, let's see, uh, you you were around too when uh, well, obviously you're still working for Disney uh, when Pixar you know, kind of took over and uh, kind of worked with uh, Disney to make some of the uh, so well known yeah. uh, classics. And and how was that changed? Yeah. How was that changed for you uh, when, when Pixar kind of started uh, doing these animations? Well, I was very excited about uh, Pixar. I was well aware of the company for a number of years before the public was even aware of Pixar as an animation studio. Uh, initially, Pixar had been a hardware company, and then it became a software company. Eventually, Pixar became a motion picture company <laughs> of producing animated cartoons. So Pixar had a, you know, a number of years before they actually became an animated cartoon maker. I went up to Pixar myself back in 1997 when they were still a fairly small company. And I went up there because they asked me to come up to work on uh, Toy Story 2. Oh, sure. And, yeah, and so Pixar at that time was a very small company, around 300 people, or maybe a little less. Uh, today, it's a great deal larger, but uh, back in the early days, Pixar was uh, what I would almost call a boutique studio. It was very small, a uh, very small group of artists and and, uh, and tech people, but they were marvelous filmmakers, and it was a great opportunity to be up there at that time. Steve Jobs was still there back in 1997, so it was a very exciting time to work at Pixar. <laughs> and it seemed like it, it just, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of the Pixar animated films too over the last course of a few years, and and I'm just yeah. kind of blown away by you know, just the uh, the create creativity and, and story and imagination that definitely goes into uh, some of these productions. I, I watched uh, when Toy Story three came out uh, uh, when it came out in theaters, and and I was just uh, among the shock too that uh, didn't think that they'd actually make a third to Toy Story movie, but I was glad that they did. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was well aware they they were going to make a third uh, Toy Story film even way back in 1999. <laughs> I was up at Pixar. I was up at Pixar working on Monsters Incorporated. Oh yeah, and and uh, John Lasseter was uh, discussing Toy Story three with one of his artists, and this was years before the film even went into uh, production. So I knew they were going to do it. It just took a while to get around to it. But uh, as I said, it was uh, it was a it was great to be there because Pixar was a, a young company at that time, full of uh, a lot of young people. A lot of people uh, just beginning their careers in animation, so it was a very exciting company, and it was a great place to be. And for a Disney old timer like myself, and I was kind of like the old veteran, it was great to be at a new studio with a lot of young people and a lot of new talent, and and uh, and they did great work. So it, it was fun for me as well, just to be at this brand new studio uh, doing really terrific work. And I suppose, you know, just the fact that you work for Disney, you, you, just like you were saying, you pretty much get to know what's up before anybody else knows. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's a, that, that's a hidden benefit because all of these productions are planned years in advance. So we always know what's coming down, down the pike, you know. Uh, like I said, these pictures uh, take a long time to develop and a long time to produce. So you always know uh, what's being planned, even though you can't talk about it. Do you uh, get to like meet some of the uh, voice actors too, that or some of the celebrities that uh, lended their voices to some of these uh, motion pictures? Oh, oh yes. Uh, part of the fun part of being in this business is you you do get to meet a lot of the the voice actors, and uh, over the years I've met a lot of uh, talented people, a lot of people who I really admire. And it was great having the opportunity to work with these uh, talented uh, actors, you know, and some of them are just really great to work with. And I've had the opportunity to meet everybody from Tom Hanks to uh, Billy Crystal, John Goodman, uh, John Ratzenberger, who has done voices in every Pixar film. Oh, yes. Is, is, a, is a really fun guy. And so, yeah, it's great to be able to, to work with uh, all the talent because... Uh, we're all working together to create a great product. 
So do you got any family members of yours that are working for Disney too, or are you the only one? I do have one family member, and that is my wife, who you probably spoke to briefly earlier. Yep. Uh, she is a Disney illustrator, and she works uh, for Disney Publishing doing the Disney storybooks. Oh. So my wife is also a, uh, a talented artist. I tell people she's actually better than I am. <laughs> <laughs> so speak- she's actually a better artist than I am. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course, you got to yeah. give her credit here. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of books, uh, let's talk about your book uh, that you said you just recently wrote, wrote a book that just got published. Uh, uh, tell the audience a little bit about uh, what it is that uh, what the book is about. Well, over the years, a lot of people have asked me, "What is it? You know, what's it like to work at Disney? Uh, what's it like to work for the Nine O Men? And what was it like to work for Walt Disney?" So I thought eventually I needed to put these thoughts down on paper, so so I wouldn't have to explain it to everybody over and over again. I actually wrote a book that I called Animated Life, and I talked about my years at Disney and what the Disney uh, story process was like, what the Disney production pipeline was like back in back in the old days back in the 50s back in the 60s and 70s uh, before a lot of these young kids who are in the business now had even come into the business so i wrote about that time it's a time long past but it's a time still very fresh in my mind and i wanted to tell the story so people who didn't experience what i experienced i wanted them to know what disney was like back then and what it was like to work with the founder of the company, Walt Disney. What was it like to work with the, the old man himself? And so I just wanted to tell these stories and pass on a few of the things that I'd learned from the Disney masters, and I put it all down in, in this book called Animated Life. Okay. And, and uh, is it a pretty lengthy book or with a lot of great pictures and stuff? Well, yeah, you know, I wouldn't call it a lengthy book because it's only around, I don't know, 250 pages maybe, and it's full of uh, photographs that I took myself. Uh, I actually brought my camera in and and grabbed shots around the studio back then. So the book is full of my own photographs. It's full of my own sketches of the Disney characters. And uh, so it's a very personal book. Even though it's a book about a, a big company, and of course Disney uh, employed hundreds and hundreds of people, it's kind of personal in the sense that it's my story. I'm telling the story from my perspective, from my point of view. And I uh, fill the book with my photographs, with my drawings and sketches, and uh, and with my words, so, telling what it was like, you know, what it was like to be a Disney artist back then. So anybody of all, uh, so anybody of all age or any type of age would probably appreciate the work that got in, got into your book. Sure, yeah, and and actually, it, it's not a book just for artists. I, I tried to write the book so that anybody could read it and, and enjoy it, whether they were an artist or not. Oh, okay, okay. And where yeah. and where can people uh, pick up this book if uh, since you said it's published right now? Yeah, it uh, it was published earlier this year, and uh, you can find it in bookstores, you know, pretty much everywhere. And in uh, and if you can't find it in a bookstore, because I know bookstores often sell out, you can always go to Amazon dot com, where it's always available. I tell people, you know, even though I want to support bookstores, they'll get a better price if they go to Amazon. Oh, cool! So if they look if they're looking to save a few bucks, just you know, go online and go to Amazon. And my book, Animated Animated Life, is right there. Oh, that's cool. And, and I'll, I'll gladly put the link down below so if people want to click on it and uh, order a copy, hey, why not, you know? Yeah, I tried to make it a fun read. It's not a heavy book. It's not an academic tome. It's a very lighthearted look at uh, the animation business, especially the animation business as seen from the Disney perspective and what it was like to work at the Disney studio and to work with Walt Disney himself. Oh, that's excellent. Uh, one last question I have before we uh, wrap up this interview, and, and basically it's, uh, uh, is, is there any current project that you're working on right now that you could talk about? Well, yeah, I've, um, I'm have i always working on something, and uh, I still try to lend my talents to the 
Disney Storybook uh, team at Disney where we, you know, we do a number of storybooks. Well, actually, I shouldn't say a night. On dozens and dozens of storybooks for each Disney feature film that comes out. And recently, I worked on storybooks for Monsters. Uh, I worked on some of the Princess storybooks. And over in television, I've been working on a, uh, a wacky, zany new show called the annoying orange oh, okay. uh, which surprises some people because it's not a disney show <laughs> but it is a very fun show and i've had the opportunity to work with a lot of fun young people on the annoying orange and so i've been working on that show as well yeah so i keep i keep myself busy <laughs> I, i'm pretty familiar with the annoying orange i'm kind of surprised that you actually said that you're working on that because uh, a lot of the uh, youtubers that are actually uh, well-known youtubers uh, that's kind of how it got started. Being on YouTube. Exactly, that's how it that's how it started. It started <laughs> out as a series of YouTube videos, and then Cartoon Network picked it up to be a, uh, uh, a television series. So, uh, Dane Bo, who's the creator of the uh, the, the marvelous uh, Annoying Orange, uh, went from YouTube to uh, to the television screen, and we've had a lot of fun doing the TV series, so it's it's a wild, crazy, wacky show, but it's been a lot of fun as well. And I've seen a lot of merchandise uh, being sold, probably more just because of the TV show, more or less, because uh, I've seen shirts, I've seen hats, I've seen candy, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wear the Annoying Orange t-shirt myself, I've got, <laughs> I've got a number of t-shirts here of the Annoying Orange, and I wear it proudly, I'm... I'm I'm, I'm having as much fun with that show as, as anything I've done. So, like I said, I enjoy working. I enjoy making people laugh. And so it's just been a real pleasure to work with uh, Dane Bow on The Annoying Orange. Well, hey, it's been a real pleasure having you on the on my little podcast show here. Uh, I appreciate just uh, having somebody of your, you know, your big name guy, you know, your legend in Disney, and uh, you know, I'm. <laughs> well, I'm a, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm proud to have you on. I think it's kind of cool that you didn't like just blow me off and say, "Get a get a real <laughs> job, kid." <laughs> I would never do that. No, it's it, it's it's been a real pleasure talking to you. I I always enjoy sharing what I've uh, had a very fun and entertaining life and uh, I tell you you know I, 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 I wouldn't have done anything else I've had I've had a real ball spending my life just uh, drawing cartoons and making people laugh all right man well thank you uh, Floyd for uh, for just uh, coming on the show and uh, uh, telling your story uh, I'm sure a lot of people hopefully will enjoy this interview. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure doing it. Thank you for asking me. All right. No problem, man. You take care, and we'll talk to you later. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. All right. And that was Mr. Floyd Norman, who uh, just recently was just chatting with me uh, right here on the Frankie Slauson Show and the Icons of Pop Culture series that just uh, continues, uh, even though right now currently it's uh, 1040 uh, p.m. at night. And I'm chatting when everybody else in my in this house is sleeping. <laughs> but it's okay. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this interview. And uh, please go check out uh, Floyd's book. Because uh, uh, it really made a lot to me the fact that we could do this interview after uh, me asking him uh, like a couple months ago. Uh, you know, and the fact that he, you know, he never blew me off. He just was busy. And, you know, this is probably the only time I'd be able to get to chat with him for a while before he uh, gets busy again. So uh, so show Floyd some love and pick up a copy of his book. I might even have to do that, uh, pick up a copy and give it to my nephews for Christmas because they, uh, they love Disney. So uh, I think to teach them about the history of Disney would be excellent, very excellent. Anyway, I'm Frankie Slauson, and we'll see you again for another great uh, iconic interview, or uh, got some uh, video interview coming up pretty soon here. So, a lot of people have been asking when do you guys start making some videos, and I said, well, soon, real soon. I just want to take a little bit of a break. So, anyway, we'll talk to you later, and uh, thanks for tuning in for another great Frank Slauson Show interview. Bye bye. <laughs>